great flowing river and it makes glad the city of God voices its songs are of peace in the house of the Lord what shall we fear the nations may trend glad the city of God and it makes glad the city of God broad are its waters broad are its waters and deep are its voices and deep are its voices its songs are of peace its songs are of peace in the house of the Lord. Do that last part again. Its songs are of peace. Its songs are of peace in the house of the Lord. Oh, such a great song of hope. That's what we are, people of hope, in the midst even of 
very difficult, dark situations. We've got this word of promise that God is with us, God loves us, and ultimately, ultimately, uh, God, love wins, huh? That's the message. And we all gather by that great river this morning. Welcome to worship this second Sunday in the Epiphany season. Epiphany is a party season. Epiphany continues the Christmas joy, the season of light, the season of manifestation. We get to see what Jesus came to do and what he came to teach in this time. And our theme today in the story, it's the wedding at Canaan, the first sign in John's gospel. And I just was captivated by that line that Mary says, do whatever he tells you. <laughs> so that's what we'll open up in a little while. We have a, a great youth and education board, and they are concerned about how to inspire kids and teach kids, and, and actually the most important thing to, to uh, be like an incubator for faith in kids' lives and provide experiences for them to learn and grow in faith. And one of the pieces of that that they want to encourage is Bible camp. Bible camp is a good thing. How many of you went to Bible camp ever? Okay, maybe about not quite half. Okay. Uh, I, I'm sure if you talked to any of those people, they would say, oh, yeah, that was, that was a good time. That was an important time in my life. It's just one of the pieces. Green Lake Lutheran Ministries is the camp that we're uh, associating with right now. And so I want to invite our guests. Go on up to the podium there and introduce yourselves and share what you have to share this morning. Good morning. Let's see those hands one more time. Who, who's been to Bible camp? Hey, now that is awesome. And I'll wave to you while my hand is up. So I was uh, on the way in. Oh, sorry, I'm Travis Ofter, Heidi, and I'm with, uh, I'm the executive director at Green Lake Lutheran Ministries, and then this is Lindsay Scheid, who is our associate director. Uh, on the way in today in our two-hour drive, leaving at 6.15 this morning, uh, I was talking about all of the different connections that I'm aware of from the congregation here. And just in the last five years, uh, I was able to account, we have two different people that have been staff members, counselors, etc., at the Bible camp. But there's also been more, and there's even some present today, and uh, I want to say wherever Hope is sitting um, you know, was a camp staff person back in my era also. And uh, we've even had some campers over the last recent years. But I do recognize that we're, we're re-engaging a bit, right? I've been wanting to come to the, to the congregation for about the last two or three years, but it's just always been tricky with scheduling. And so thank you, thank you, thank you for welcoming us here this morning. Uh, the hospitality has been wonderful. I did ask, though, uh, whether it was hospitality or security that five people came up to me to, <laughs> <laughs> to introduce themselves as I came in. But uh, no, it's, it's a blessing to be here today. Thank you so much. Um, at, we at Green Lake Lutheran Ministry are, are, are absolutely, positively thrilled to be partnering with you this coming summer for for a safe and fun, engaging, and powerful ministry in 2022. This summer, we're doing something special together. This summer, together, we are going to be embarking on something that really does have the potential of being life-changing. And now that word, life-changing, I can admit it gets overused a little bit in this world, even by myself. I've told my wife, oh, those special K bars you just made, they are <laughs> life changing, right? <laughs> but when we talk about summer camp and when we talk about the way God is at work on summer camp sites and out in this world, we really do mean it that it has the potential of being life changing in the safe, relational, fun, disconnected, and Christ centered atmosphere that is camp. Faith is introduced, faith is explored, and faith is celebrated. Over coffee or after the service, I'd love, to, I'd love to share with you about what my eyes have seen on our sites, but I'd love to hear about your experiences too. Seeing all those hands up, that's so inspiring. This group knows 
uh, the impacts that that summer camp can make. Um, but I won't, I won't assume everyone knows Green Lake Lutheran Ministries, and so I'll share just a little bit about us. Number one, we're a three-site organization. We have Green Lake Bible Camp, Shores of St. Andrew Bible Camp, which are two sites that are pretty near each other, near Spicer, Minnesota, New London, near Wilmer. Um, but then we also have a, a site called Camp House, which is north of Two Harbors. Uh, this is kind of a Northwoods camp, picture vertical log cabins, uh, which are, are still original, you know, close to 100 years old at this point. Um, and all of our sites are on beautiful lakes, and all of our programs emphasize safety and vibrancy and fun as part of an all-encompassing gospel-centered experience. Um, you should also know that radical hospitality is at our core. Well, when, you, when you're met at our door, similar to how we were today, uh, by somebody who says, we're glad you're here. We knew you were coming. This is what we have prepared for you. Um, it isn't said uh, with any shallow intention. As God welcomes all, how can we not make an attempt to live up to that standard and into that call? Now, if I had an additional 10 minutes or maybe 20, <laughs> no. it's up to them. <laughs> if I did have more time, I would tell you all about what it feels like to be launched into the air on something called the flying squirrel as part of, a, as part of the high ropes course. Or I'd share about our, our fat tire mountain bike program. You know those bikes that have tires that look like Honda Civics, you know, tires, right? <laughs> Um, or I'd share about canoe trips that happen as part of normal camp weeks for the various age groups. Or I'd tell you about how fun it is to watch campers paddle and often fall off stand-up paddle boards out onto the lakes. Um, or I'd share about the sound, uh, uh, the sound uh, uh, of what it feels like or, or sounds like to be around a campfire each night as we close the day in some of the most awe-inspiring and fun worship experiences. But it's clear I don't have the time to do all that. And so what I'm going to leave you with is this. You're invited. You're invited, of course, to come and chat with me about, about these experiences and ask questions of Lindsay and I, grab material off that table on the way in. There's stickers and chapstick. Chapstick is great in this time of year. Grab a green leg chapstick. So you're invited to come and chat with us about that, but please know that you're invited to participate in programs. You're invited to come to our summer campsites and, and partner with us on some, on some safe, awe-inspiring, and life-changing ministry. I'm so thankful to be here. I can't wait to chat with you after the service, and I'm excited to be part of uh, the after, after church uh, education hour known as Something. Kids of the Kingdom. Kids of the Kingdom. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So let's just be quiet for a moment. Would you be aware of the gift of your life, of every beat of your heart? I told the kids on Wednesday I had a medical procedure where I got to watch my heart on a screen a couple weeks ago. And I was like, wow, thank you. <laughs> You've been doing that ever since the beginning for me, just faithful little muscle pumping away. <laughs> so be aware, every beat of your heart, a gift, every breath that you take, not guaranteed. Here we are in this moment, beloved children of God, here to worship Here to open our hearts and minds. Here to express our praise. Here to listen to the good news proclaimed. We begin with confession. Help me, God, the bottom's fallen out. Oh, Lord, hear my cry, my anguished shout. Hear 
my cry for mercy I know what you can do There's nowhere I can turn But back to you My life's a prayer I practice knowing you Wait for what you'll say and what you'll do My life is on the line I wait for morning new There's nowhere I can turn But back to you If you kept score of wrong Who'd stand a chance People of God, wait for the Holy One who comes with love that's never outdone. Redemption bought and paid. So what else can we do? There's nowhere we can turn but back to you. There's nowhere we can turn but back to you. For peace in this soul. Today, as I said, that we're, we're hearing the story of the wedding at Cana. Jesus goes to parties. Jesus celebrates the good things of life. And we have this feast that we celebrate every time we worship. And we say that it's a feast of victory. This is the language right out of Revelation. This is the feast of the victory of our God 
This is the feast of the victory of our God. For the Lamb who was slain has begun His reign. Hallelujah, hallelujah forevermore. Christ the Lamb is worthy of the power, wealth, and wisdom, all the strength and honor, glory, and the blessing. For the one who was slain has been raised up again. We join with all creation in confessing. This is the peace of the victory of our God. This is the peace of the victory of our God. For the Lamb who was slain has begun His reign. Hallelujah, hallelujah, forevermore. Every creature joining up above and on the earth in the underworld and see they all are singing to the one on the throne to the lamb all alone the blessing on and glory ever ringing this is the feast of the victory of our god this is the feast of the victory of our god slain has begun his reign hallelujah hallelujah forevermore hallelujah hallelujah The Lord be with you. Let's join in the prayer of the day as you see it there. Lord God, source of every blessing, you showed forth your glory and led many to faith by the works of your Son, who brought gladness and salvation to his people. Transform us by the spirit of his love that we may find our life together in him, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
So lovely. Thank you. A reading from Isaiah. Regarding Zion, I can't keep my mouth shut. Regarding Jerusalem, I can't hold my tongue. Until her righteousness blazes down like the sun and her salvation flames up like a torch. Foreign countries will see your righteousness and the world leaders your glory. You'll get a brand new name straight from the mouth of God. You'll be a stunning crown in the palm of God's hand, a jeweled cup held high in the hand of your God. No more will anyone call you rejected, and your country will no more be called ruined. You'll be called Hephzibah, my delight, and your land Beulah, married. Because God delights in you and your land will be like a wedding celebration. For as a young man marries his virgin bride, so your builder marries you. And as a bridegroom is happy in his bride, so your God is happy with you. Thank you, Bob. So our gospel verse today relates to that, and the gospel we're going to hear as a groom is delighted with his bride, so God will delight in you. The song we're going to do is a Scandinavian tune. Join the celebration, come and rejoice with a happy family. No more objecting, no more hesitation, come and rejoice, let your heart be free. Dance and wonder at the simple joys, sing a little song about a day of happiness. Feel much younger as you lift your voice, feel a little stronger ever forever blessed. celebration. Come with your friends who are near and far away. Come when you're ready, come with expectation. This is a feast, it's a wedding day. Dance and wonder at the simple joys. Sing a little song about a day of happiness. Feel much younger as you lift your voice. Feel a little stronger and forever blessed. Dance and wonder at the simple joys. Sing a little song about a day of happiness. Feel much younger as you lift your voice. Feel a little stronger and forever blessed.
Come to the wedding, come with celebration. Jesus is here with a wonderful surprise. Watch what he does with great anticipation. This is a vision of paradise. Dance and wonder at the simple joys. Sing a little song about a day of happiness. Feel much younger as you lift your voice. Feel a little stronger and forever blessed. Dance and wonder at the simple joys. Sing a little song about a day of happiness. Feel much younger as you lift your voice. Feel a little stronger and forever blessed. Two days later, there was a wedding in the town of Cana in Galilee. <laughs> Jesus' mother was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. <laughs> when the wine had given out, Jesus' mother said to him, They are out of wine. Madam, what do you have to do with this? My time has not yet come. Do whatever he tells you. The Jews have rules about ritual washing, and for this purpose, six stone water jars were there, each one large enough to hold between 20 and 30 gallons. Fill these jars with water. They filled them to the brim. Now draw some water out and take it to the man in charge of the feast. servants who had drawn out the water knew. So he called the bridegroom. Everyone else serves the best wine first. And after the guests have drunk a lot, he serves the ordinary wine. But you have kept the best wine until now. Jesus performed this first miracle in Cana in Galilee. There he revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. After this, Jesus and his mother, brothers and disciples, went to Capernaum and stayed there a few days. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, who is our loving Creator, Jesus our Savior, and the Holy Spirit who enlightens us. Amen. 
So as we heard two weeks ago, Jesus, an uh, ordinary man who goes down into the water, identifying with all the likes of us. An ordinary man from Nazareth, of all places, a kind of a nowhere place, a poor boy from a poor family, jerked around by empire. We heard in the birth story how they had to go to Bethlehem just because the emperor said so when Mary is so pregnant. Bethlehem, another little no place that matters not much, and born in a stable there, which is like as low as you can go. And he's baptized by John in the wilderness. The wilderness. <laughs> no place out, out there beyond the empire's significance. And now we hear today of the first of Jesus' signs. That's the right way to translate it, not miracles, but signs. That's the word in the Greek text. In John's gospel, we have seven signs. This is the first one. Another little nothing of a village called Cana. No doubt poor folks because they don't have enough wine. And wine in those circumstances, that kind of hospitality for your guests in this extended wedding celebration was very important. An important sign of the joy of the occasion. And so very embarrassing to run out. I suspect they just couldn't afford enough wine. In those days, you know, food and wine was not served just indiscriminately the same to everybody. Did you know that? In fact, that's a thing Paul takes up with the Corinthian church about their ways that they're doing the, the, the community meal, that the rich are getting the good food over here and the poor didn't have any food. And Paul writes to them to say, what's the matter with you? Well, what do you mean? That's what we do. <laughs> In that culture, your status determined what you got. Oh, that's not how it is today. Oh, boy. What, what you got depended on your social status. So some guests got cheap wine, a mixture of vinegar and water and wine, like what Jesus was offered on the cross. And the high-status guests were served the good stuff. The good news is that in this story, Jesus' wine, all that good stuff that he produces, that he brings to the party, is the good stuff. It is the best stuff. And it is for everybody. He takes the side of this poor groom and bride who ran out of wine in the middle of a wedding feast. He clinks glasses with folks who are exhausted by poverty, telling them, salud, cheers, skol, meaning salvation, liberation, humanization, healing. This is good news for the poor. We're going to hear him proclaim that next week. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. To the folks whose lands have been plundered by the big vineyard owners, Jesus provided the most exquisite wine, and for free. Now the way the story tells it, there's so much. It, these six big jars, it's something like 120 gallons of the best wine and I don't know anything about wine, but I have a good friend who worked for years out in wineries uh, doing tours of vineyards out there in the Napa Valley. And so he had to learn all about wine to do that. And I said, what would, what would uh, he's also a PhD in Old Testament, <laughs> how much would it cost to have 130 gallons of the best wine? And he went, oh, let's see. And he began to do calculation, and he said, oh my gosh, that'd be something like $150,000. <laughs> this is quite a gift, quite a wedding gift. This first epiphany sign proclaims the liberating news that in the reign of God there are no hierarchies. How different that is from the world we live in, huh? where your status kind of determines everything. Your money determines everything. Epiphany, the season that we're in, that word, 
It's, it's the manifestation season. And what is manifested to us is that, well, one of us, a Nazarene, born in Bethlehem, baptized in the wilderness, he's one of us. He tends weddings and he celebrates life and togetherness. Jesus is showing us God's glory, God's sense of humor, God's nearness. See, in this case, and very often, the people that really owned all the vineyards and the land, they were absentee landlords. Jesus tells some stories, you know, about landlords and vineyards. And but to God is not that. That's the point of the story. God is not off there somewhere hoarding the good stuff like people tend to do. No, God is very near and dear, bringing much needed change, new wine, the best wine, at the exact time when it is most needed, when we've run out. Anybody here that could say, you know, sometimes I just feel like I've run out. I need something. Like we started our service today. Help me, God! The bottom's falling out. I don't like this. I'm uncomfortable. Something's gone wrong. I'm at the end of my resources. Our supply has run out. So there's a line in this transformation story. That's what I would call it, a transformation story. And you, just, you need to kind of read yourself in there. You know, what is the new wine that's needed? The miracle sign that's needed in your own life. The line that intrigues me comes when Mary says, they've run out, they've run out. And and initially, isn't this interesting? Jesus says, that's none of our business. What is that to you? What's that to me? It's not my hour yet. It's not time for my glory to show forth. And his mother just kind of ignores that. <laughs> I like how the actress did it. He says, you know, my hours, and she doesn't just accept it. She goes, hmm, do whatever he tells you. There's the key. Do whatever he tells you. Now, Jesus, I don't know, his mother kind of trumps him here. <laughs> And he goes and tells them, fill up these water pots. And and we're given this story of this transformation. They do what he tells them, and all this amazing, abundant blessing comes forth, this amazing wine. The first sign in John's gospel is blessing. It is a feast. It is no moderation, exuberance, superabundance, and it all flows out of do whatever he tells you. No one expects this new wine. The best for everyone. Really? For everybody? This? But maybe, just maybe, when we do whatever he tells us, this is precisely what we should expect. Huh? Amen. response to God of grace is, hear our prayer. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. By your Spirit, activate within your church gifts of faith, healing, and prophecy. Unite those who profess your name across congregations, denominations, and geographic boundaries. 
Open our hearts to recognize and celebrate surprising miracles. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your creation reflects your generosity. Blessed farmers, migrant farm workers, orchard keepers, ranchers, and all who tend the abundance of land, protect food and water sources from destruction that all can eat and drink and be satisfied. God of grace, by your wisdom, grant, by your spirit, grant wisdom, knowledge, and discernment to those who hold leadership positions at any level. Direct policy makers toward compassionate decisions that build up safe and just communities. Lead authorities in seeking and serving the common good. God of grace. As Jesus provided generously in a moment of need, provide generous gifts for healing for those in need this day, especially Betty, Mary Jo, Jackie, John, Dave, Shannon, Brenda, Claire, and Brett. Provide abundantly for all who are hungry or thirsty, all seeking shelter, and all who seek peace. God of grace, hear our prayer. You see us for who we are, and you delight in us. Embrace those struggling with self-worth, wrestling with self-identity, or facing significant life transition. Remind us that nothing can separate us from your love, God of grace. You bless us through the spiritual gifts of the saints who have gone before us. We give thanks for the life of Martin Luther King, Jr., and all who have modeled the way of courageous faith. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Great joy to have the children to sing today. Here they come.
Thanks, kids, as always. That is just delightful. So we'll sing the communion liturgy now and end by coming to the Lord's table. The beginning of it is called the Great Thanksgiving and then the Sanctus, the Holy, Holy, Holy. our hearts in praise our delightful duty is to give our thanks always Lord Jesus was betrayed. He took the bread and then he prayed, giving thanks over the bread to his friends. He said, this my body given for you. Eat this and remember me. This my presence real and true. Love that sets you free. When the tenders open up and lift it up, giving thanks over the wine to those with whom he died, said, This my blood is shed for you. Drink this and remember me. This my presence, real and true, love that sets you.
welcome to come to the Lord's table and participate in this feast of superabundant grace. 